All right, it is time for Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet, episode number three. My buddy Darren in the marketing department with Blaine's Farm and Fleet joins us to introduce this. I asked Darren to be a part of this because the feedback on Inside Wisconsin's Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet has been really cool, Darren. And so I just thought we would give a quick history on how we came up with this idea and what it's all about. And I'll tip it to you here in a second. But when I shared this with John, John Anderson, he said that's the heart of Inside Wisconsin. That was what the whole idea was back in September of 2020 when he and I talked about doing this. So out of curiosity, when you and I started putting this thing Mm -hmm. together, How would you describe how this idea that we came up with connects with Farm and Fleet's values? Sure. Well, I think, you know, initially when you and I started talking, just the the broader inside Wisconsin resonated, right? Um, Right. You know, the the two things that stuck out were, um, you know, the the, the positive stories and then the statriotism, right? And that that word I don't think I'll ever forget. (laughs) But... uh, (laughs) But, you know, it was the kind of the positivity or the, the joy filled stories, you know, as a, as a brand, you know, we like to think of ourselves, Blaine's, as being very positive, um, you know, f- from its from the get go. You know, our, our, our culture was based on um, things like we treat our associates like family and our customers like neighbors. And we definitely want to build those relationships. Um, and then the statriotism. I mean, I, you know, I'd like to think that uh, in every state we have a Blaine's, um, there's, there's that homage and there's that, you know, deep yeah. affinity. We're very much about community, you know, being involved at a local level and being charitable and, and, and you know, making sure that, uh, you know, our, we're, we're a welcome place for people to meet up and, and, and like-minded people to kind of shop and interact. So, you know, that whole inside Wisconsin, right, right there, you know, it felt like there was a connection. The, the people that inside Wisconsin engages with is fantastic. You know, the Barry Alvarez's and the Jonathan yeah. Taylor's, but the idea was born out of there's, there's other noteworthy people out there doing great things every day. And um, let's put the spotlight on them as well. And that was the whole idea of diving deeper. Now with deeper roots is trying to tell their stories. I love that you said, Farm and Fleet is a place to meet. I mean, that's why we did my grandpa's story for Mm -hmm. episode one, because I have significant memories from going to Farm and Fleet with him in my childhood. It's been really exciting, really grateful for this partnership and the opportunity to travel the state and tell these deeper rooted stories with Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And so today's Deep Roots, Deeper Roots, is (laughs) Vanessa at the Victory Garden Farm in Fredonia, and you'll see, and Darren was there, I cannot get all of these chickens surrounding me out of my head. How did we find this idea of the Reco Ring, Darren? And then we'll get to it. We are, uh, we're, we're in the process of completing a new store out in Grafton. And uh, it turns out that uh, apparently uh, Vanessa and her group were, uh, were using kind of the grounds around that building yeah. for their reco ring, right? Which was a new term for all of us. When we started construction there, you know, she reached out to make sure that, that she and her, and her group could still meet there. And uh, it kind of opened the door to what's a reco ring. And then you sort of reverse engineer into it. And she's got a fantastic story. Yeah, and she started in Wisconsin. This is a Wisconsin born and raised woman who moved away and like Jeannie, from the Firefly. Mm -hmm. She couldn't stay away. She had Mm -hmm. to come back. Let's get to it. Episode three of Inside Wisconsin's Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet. We're naming this one The Reco. R-E-K-O, all capital, Mm -hmm. ring. What's that? Reco is a acronym that loosely stands for fair consumption. Farmers, brewers, hunters, packers, badgers, cheeseheads, Neighbors, no matter what name we go by, we are bound together by our roots. These are the people, the stories, and the statriotism from inside Wisconsin. Welcome to Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Back in a barn for episode three of Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Vanessa with Victory Garden Farms. Vanessa, thanks for having us out. Thanks for being here. City Slicker, we're gonna learn a lot about farming today and a little bit of a a different angle on farming here in Wisconsin. So, um, my farm is the Victory Garden Farm, Fredonia, Wisconsin, and I'm a certified organic farm that 
specializes in raising heritage breed animals, primarily pastured poultry, chickens, turkeys, and then raising heirloom vegetables. Do you know what heirloom in so, heritage? Yeah, of course I do. No, not a clue. Tell me. <laughs> so heritage breed animals are the older breeds. They're not the standard animal breeds that are typically raised today in factory farms. Do we get to go and check out the 500 chickens? Yes, we can. Yeah. So this is... Where do we have to go to get eggs? We go inside. In, in? Yeah, don't be scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Maybe a little sure? bit scared. You're acting a little scared. Do they jump and peck eyeballs out? No, but they might grab your leg hair. Oh. All right, let's do it. Yeah, so I hey. get about 30 dozen eggs a day. 30 dozen? Where yeah. do you sell them? Um, I sell to a lot of local, small-scale grocery stores. I sell to um, restaurants and then through RECO, so direct sales to my RECO customers. Does it hurt if you get pe pecked in the hand? Sometimes. They draw blood. They can. Come on. But you'll be fine. I'll Come get on. these eggs that don't have a chicken on them. How about that? <laughs> the word farming in Wisconsin is rarely used for a farm like this, right? We're used to big crop farms or big dairy farms or big beef farms or cattle farms. So um, this is unique. And then we're gonna talk in a little bit about this whole reco ring thing, which is also unique, but where did you first put your roots in the soil to have a passion for what you're doing today? I guess it would have to go back to being a child and not even really realizing how important it was. We moved, I moved to Wisconsin when I was five from the Bronx and- um, Big upgrade. <laughs> So we lived in the inner city in the projects. Wow. And I'll never forget the feeling of when we first landed in Wisconsin and we got to my step-grandparents' farm and I was allowed to play outside by myself. Mm -hmm. That was a big deal, that I could go run and play. But having a garden, having your hands in the soil, just growing up like that, I didn't realize how much of an impact it really had on me until I left Wisconsin. How old were you when you left? 18. Okay. So I left, I was gone for 25 years, never thought I would come back. Of course. But here I am, here and now are. I have a farm. So you picked something up though in your travels in this RECO ring, R-E-K-O, all capital, ring. What's that? It's actually an acronym, and it is not my original idea. I heard about it on a podcast, but RECO is a acronym that loosely stands for fair consumption and it was started by a farmer in Sweden called Thomas Snellman and it's just a way for producers, farmers to have direct market to their customer base and the way that it works is they it's a Facebook group and all the farmers advertise their things on this closed Facebook group and the customers order directly online they, you have an agreed upon drop off site and the customers come to pick up the items there. Uh, what's some of the feedback? A lot of people love having that direct connection with the producers, knowing that they're supporting truly local food, mm, so true. supporting the community. Also the efficiency of it, because everybody's busy, a lot of people love to go to farmer's markets, but sometimes people just don't have the time. Sure. Also for people who where mobility is an issue that mm. can't necessarily um, go out and, and walk around the farmer's markets. This is a convenient way for them just to come and pick up. But for us as producers, it's just the efficiency yeah. and um, how, how easy it is. It's just one hour of our time, the pickup time, and it's just really a great outlet. It makes things a lot easier for us. We're gonna be there. We're gonna see it in person. Good. I can't wait to see the yeah, us too. Now we're at the Reckel Ring here in Grafton and this is where it all comes to them now. Yeah, this is where the customers come and pick up their the things that they ordered from the individual producers. Farming ain't easy. It ain't. And yet, there's gotta be a fulfilling piece to this. Now you're here, your customers are coming up, you're delivering it, you see the joy on their face, and then you kinda go back to it the next morning. Yeah, this is exactly why we do it, is for the community and to get the positive feedback. And even though people are driving through, you know, we've had this, this going on for two years and you do get yeah. to know people. Right. So that's why for me, when I moved back to Wisconsin, it was easy for for me to, well, I won't want to say that the farm was easy to start, but I already had a built-in community because I grew up here. Totally. And that's... people had watched my farm journey over the years. And so when we started the Victory Garden Farm, Andrew and I, people were interested and you know, I had a built-in community. That's I grew Wisconsin, up here. that's yeah. so Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Seeing it in person now, right? We can 
we can walk around the farm and all the things, but they're all coming through now and it's first name basis and this many eggs and that many chickens and how are the kids and yeah. Hi, how are you? Good. How's your summer been going? Good. 15 dozen eggs is that? She got one dozen. Oh, okay. Okay. I got helpers today. One dozen. Yes. Freshly picked this morning. He it helped. Was, so he's helped. all excited. We, I did help. It was scary. He was freaked out. You ever picked out. your own eggs? I was freaked out. Yeah. You ever picked your own eggs? Uh, turns out me neither until today. They're little velociraptors. They are. They chase you and peck at you and squawk at you and then you have to like scoot their butt off the... I mean, that's as fresh <laughs> as they get. Victory Garden Farm. It is. It's dangerous. Well, thank you for letting us come and check this out and see just your rooted story. It was so neat to know that you were here at five years old and left and came back because it's required of everybody that grows up in Wisconsin. Nobody ever stays away forever. No. We're learning that. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Absolutely. And showing us this reco ring. What If you could like, I don't know, talk to us in 25 years, what do you want this to become? What's your joy? What's your, what would ring your joy bell with all this? I really want to spread the RECO word and create a RECO revolution and just get, you know, introduce this concept to other farms around the country and, you know, offer it as another option for the community as well as the producers. Because I think it's a really great way to support, support local food, the local food system. Clearly, it really is. The RECO revolution. Yes. I did. I did legit pick those eggs. And as soon as they came around the corner, I heard you say, oh, like once Wisconsin, always Wisconsin. <laughs> it was a blast. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. really fun. It was a blast. Do you want me to put this in your back seat? Yes, I would love for you to put that in my back seat. Eggs and chickens. It's like the full circle of life. Thank you so much for your business. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thanks for supporting the local farming I'll, community. I'll pick my own next time too, okay. I promise. I won't freak out nearly as much this time. But Thank you. A little scared. I was a little scared. A lot of chicken. There was a lot of chicken. Everybody Full was. circle. The wind caught that thing and it sounded like chicken wings. And I was like, what, what? <laughs> so these are nasturtiums. That's really good. Edible flowers. You just waste them? Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm fine. I'm not scared. I'm just a jumpy. Excuse me. Excuse me. So of, when you <clears throat> when you eight dozen eggs to one person, mm -hmm. do are they the ones that put on the dairy breakfast or like what? Happened? I've actually dropped a whole huge bucket. Biffed it. Yes, exactly. Biffed it. All right, that's it for episode three of Inside Wisconsin's Deeper Roots with Blaine's Farm and Fleet. If you enjoyed this, we know you did. Your feedback is pouring in. We're grateful for that. Go to YouTube, like us, hit subscribe. And of course, if you're listening on the podcast side, go leave that five-star review. If you'd like to learn more about Vanessa and the Victory Garden Farm, or if you're interested in joining the RECO Revolution, please visit her website. It's foodforvictory.com. And of course, if you have a deeper root story that we can share on your behalf, we'd love that. Go to the website, fill out the form, farmandfleet.com slash deeper roots. Talk to you later. Bye. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Blaine's Farm and Fleet, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Roll Tech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. Shut up and sit down.